Hello dear friends and welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Mohsen Raj. I am a DM Cardiology student at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. I have completed my MD from Ames, Delhi only. This is a different video than what I usually post in my channel. It's because we are in the middle of a new wave of this pandemic, COVID-19, and this time by a new variant. And Government of India has recently published the guidelines for home management and, and, and isolation for such patients. So what this video is about, it's for common masses who uh, should get a reliable information on this new variant and about this new wave that we are facing. And in order to avoid the misinformation that you know people usually get over the WhatsApp or even sometimes news channels for that matter, because we are not only in the middle of a pandemic, we are in the middle of an infodemic. So there's a lot of misinformation. So I'll try to give a reliable information from the recent guidelines to common masses so that they understand how uh, this mild disease can be managed at home. So as all of you know that COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2, what's the name of this virus, it has undergone several different mutations and so many variants are available. So for common masses, it's relevant to remember that, you know, the last wave we faced in, in, in 2021 was because of this Delta, was because of this Delta variant, which had this unique name B.1.617. And this new wave is because of another variant, which initially appeared in South Africa, but is now global. It has spread to all the countries, including India. And this is named as Omicron variant. And what is difference in these different variants of SARS-CoV-2? See, this is the same virus. This is the same virus, but has certain changes in its genome, in its genetic material, which imparts certain characteristics to this virus. Maybe this virus is more transmissible. Maybe this virus has less severe disease. It's less pathogenic. It's less virulent. Maybe it produces a less severe disease, or maybe it has some characteristics that are different from the original virus, which we are not yet aware of. So that's how these variants differ from each other. And this is a variant of concern as designated by the World Health Organization. Now, why SARS-CoV-2 Omicron, this is the new name of it, B.1.529, this is known as Omicron, it has so many mutations from the original virus. In fact, in the very spike protein, this protein, the spike protein that the virus has on its, on its surface, which it uses to bind to our cells, it has more than 30 mutations in, in, in the spike protein. So which makes it very different from the original vi virus or from the Delta variant, which we saw the previous year. So, so far, the data is that it produces less severe disease. This is what literature data is available at the moment, but it spreads very rapidly. Its transmission is quite fast. It's the, the rate at which it replicates and the rate at which it spreads from one person to another person is very fast. So this is um, an example uh, which compares the Omicron wave to the first wave, the beta wave, and then the delta wave, which we saw previously. This is from South Africa. We don't have data from our country as of now. But see, Omicron wave has a very steep rise in the number of cases, but really the cases are less severe. The number of hospital admissions, the number of very sick patients, the number of deaths are less as of now, see, we still don't don't understand this variant completely. We still don't understand how it behaves differently because we'll come to know as the uh, as this wave, uh, you know, Im you know, fully evolves. But yes, we are in the middle of a third wave of this pandemic. The number of cases in our country are exponentially rising, almost doubling every day. So what are the symptoms of mild disease? Okay, so there'll be no different from the routine common cold or a routine flu infection, which we used to get even before this COVID-19 pandemic. So this includes mild fever or the fever could also be high grade. In addition, there would be body aches and some upper respiratory symptoms of maybe cough or runny nose. So this is what mild disease is. That is all, a fever, a sore throat, a cough, generalized body aches or tiredness, malaise, you don't want to do anything. That's all, that's mild disease and most of us would have the same mild illness. Okay, 
Now, remember the two symptoms of uh, previous uh, waves, the or Delta or the original first wave, that's loss of taste and smell, are not reported in this Omicron wave, luckily. No, people are not getting this loss of taste and loss of smell. And even the gastrointestinal symptoms, diarrhea, vomitings, they're less common reported in Omicron variant. So it is a little different. But I want you to remember that what really is mild disease. Mild disease is just a fever, a cough, a sore throat, body aches, that's all. The patient should not have any shortness of breath. The patient should have normal oxygen saturation. People know how to measure saturation at home. I can make a separate video on the same. I'll, I'll share it soon. But saturation should be more than 95%. So it means that if the patient has breathing difficulty or if the saturations are less, which we call hypoxia in medical terms, if the saturation is 94% or less in room air, it's not mild disease. That means you have to consult a physician or a doctor for the further care. In addition, even if a person, even if your family member is having mild symptoms but has some of these chronic diseases of different organ systems maybe he has diabetes maybe he has heart disease from many years kidney disease liver disease or cancer or he's on some immunosuppressive medications or he has some other immunosuppressive state even if he has mild symptoms but he is at risk of developing severe disease so such patients should be brought to attention of physician the local medical officer the caretaker so I want to point out that the government of India and the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare revised their guidelines for home isolation for mild and asymptomatic COVID-19 cases and they released on the 5th of January. So instead of you looking on Facebook and WhatsApp, it's better to read this document. This is for common people to understand that what are the latest guidelines from the reliable sources and avoid misinformation. Probably the first thing I would advise you is to avoid and ban misinformation, stop spreading misinformation. And, and if you want more information on COVID-19, check the reliable sources, the, the government guidelines or the website of World Health Organization or some medical journal instead of the University of Facebook and WhatsApp. Okay. Now, the first thing I want you to remember that what are the requirements that, uh, you know, need to be fulfilled before we um, say that a patient can be managed at home. Number one, the person should have appropriate caregivers. It's not possible for a patient to be managed at home if he doesn't have someone to take care of him or if, uh, if he has just some elderly parents at home who are themselves at risk of infection. Such a person cannot be managed at home. So appropriate caregivers have to be available at home and appropriate space has to be there. You have to have a separate place, a separate room, a separate bathroom ideally. Everything has to be separate. Even the utensils and the day-to-day uh, -day activities of life which the person performs, they have to be separate from the rest of the family members. And we have to ensure that there's no overcrowding because if we have an overcrowded place, if we don't have a separate place for the patient, then managing that patient at home will put other family members at risk. So appropriate caregivers have to be available, a separate space for that patient is to be available and appropriate facilities like who is going to provide food to that patient. Okay. And uh, another thing that uh, these uh, patients when managed at home, the family members, other family members, especially the ones who, have, who are elderly or ha have those risk factors I talked about, they take appropriate precautions, okay? And then this home-based management has to be done under supervision of some physician. You have to consult a local medical officer who guides you, who provides you the basic prescription and to whom you stay in touch with if, in case the patient deteriorates. So what are the instructions given in the government guidelines? You have to read those guidelines, but I've just summarized some of the important things. One is isolation. So the patient has to isolate himself separate bedroom, separate washroom ideally, okay? And that room should be appropriately ventilated. It's difficult in this cold season, but we have to ensure appropriate ventilation, at least intermittently open the windows so that the, um, you know, the, the risk of transmission to other family members is minimized. Okay, then the patient should wear at least a triple air medical mask or ideal an N95 mask. And especially when the attendant comes, when the other family members come to serve that patient, he should be wearing an N95 mask. He's advised to take a lot of fluids and we have all learned respiratory hygiene, the social distancing, the use of mask, the avoidance of uh, aerosol generation or frequent hand hygiene that we've already learned in the previous waves. So following that and self-monitoring, the patient has to self-monitor his saturation, self-monitor his temperature and they've given a performer for health monitoring chart where you monitor your 
heart rate, your saturation, your temperature or how you feel, maybe your general condition or your uh, breathing conditions, okay? And very important, I request all of you, do not stop your routine medication. See, you may be having chronic lung problem, chronic heart problem, maybe hypertension, maybe diabetes. You're already on a list of medications. Do not stop your routine medications if you're diagnosed with COVID. You may be in home isolation, but you have to continue all the medications that you're taking prior to that. So do not stop your routine medications for the other conditions. If you have bronchial asthma, you're on some medication, continue that. If you have kidney disease, you're on some medication, continue that. If you have a heart disease, continue all the medications because if you stop those medications, you will land in a bigger trouble. Then what are the instructions to the caregiver? Again, hand hygiene, the appropriate respiratory hygiene, use of masks and avoiding any direct contact with the body fluids or some contaminated material or fomites or utensils and, and frequent hand hygiene. And he has to ensure proper waste disposal, the masks, the other utensils produced by the patient or the other fomites produced by the patient or utilizing the care of this patient. There are guidelines, read the document, how to dispose them of. Now, you, um, this video is not about prescribing the medications to the patient, but usually the, you'll be prescribed saline gargles for the sore throat, steam inhalation for your nasal stuffiness, a paracetamol for your fever, a for your cough and cold, cough syrup for your excessive cough, plenty of fluids, and you'll have to maintain this health monitoring chart. And this prescription, a local medical officer will advise you, maybe telephonically, maybe by a consult. But important things which you should not do, these things are commonly, you know, inappropriately practiced by common public steroids someone talks to you on phone or maybe someone message on whatsapp you have to use prednisone or some other steroid remdesivir ct scan blood test none of this is advised to someone who is at home on home isolation asymptomatic or maybe mild symptoms you should not take steroids remdesivir you should not undergo any imaging no CT scans, no x-rays, no blood tests, no CRP levels, no blood test at all. If for that matter, let me warn you, if a mild, mildly symptomatic patient takes these drugs like steroids, what do they do? It simply increases your chances of having severe disease, requiring hospitalization, even death. So no steroids in, in, in patients who are in home isolation at home, no use of remdesivir at home, no use of imaging by yourself. Your doctor will advise these tests, your doctor will prescribe you these medications if you require them, if you deteriorate. As I've already told you, we are not only in the middle of a pandemic, we are also in the middle of an infodemic. We are having too much of misinformation. Please check reliable sources, avoid, you know, you know these People who, who don't, who are not doctors, who are not related to medical profession at all, but then they talk and speak on this health pandemic, health important health crisis, and they could be a potential source of misinformation. So do not listen to those kinds of um, people. And remember, you have to seek medical attention if you if you are or in home isolation and you have some of these symptoms. Like if a fever doesn't resolve for more than three days, you're running high grade fever after three to four days, you should contact your physician. If you're having difficulty in breathing, if you're having a dip in saturation, your saturation is less than 95%, less than 94% on the room air. If your respiratory rate increases, if you're having chest pain, if you're having confusion, if you're not feeling well, severe fatigue, severe myalgia, yes severe symptoms while being on home isolation contact your medical officer contact your physician okay and that is what i wanted to spread through this video we hope that this wave even if it's rapidly spreading, let's hope it produces less severe disease. Let's hope we follow appropriate precautions. Let's hope we all get through this and um, finally win over this wave as well. Thank you and um, do share this video uh, for the sake of, uh, you know, the health care of common public. Thank you.